No matter what kind of camper van or motorhome you may have, it's absolutely critical that when you get to wherever it is that you're going, your leisure battery is fully charged and ready to go. If it isn't, you may find yourself in the middle of nowhere with no lights, no water pump, no fridge, no audio, and no TV, which would be a disaster. And we don't want that, do we? I'm here today with Damien Mikowski, who knows more than most people, a lot more, about installing SeaTech onboard charging systems. And today, in this stunning VW camper van, Damien is going to install a D250SA and a SmartPass 120. So Damien, the question is, can you do it? Yes, of course. Oh, great, that's what we like to hear. Okay, well, we've got all the equipment here. Make a start. I'm going to just watch. These two products build a 140 amp charging system that quickly charges your leisure battery and distributes 12 volt power safely and reliably. In fact, when you combine them, there's actually nothing else like it on the market. To ensure maximum performance and reliability of the units, it's important that they have adequate ventilation and that they're mounted somewhere near to the leisure battery, as close as possible in fact. And that's why Damien has installed them right there underneath the driver's seat, bang next to the leisure battery. Now that Damien's installed the actual units, it's time to think about cables and fuses. Now the further the SeaTac units are away from the starter battery, the thicker the cable needs to be in order to carry the massive current that's going to be going through. There's a handy guide to which cable to use in the manual that comes with the SeaTech units. And in this case, we're using 35 mil cable. We're also, when it's all connected up, gonna be protecting everything with massive 300 amp fuses. And we'll also be using a piece of four mil cable like this, which connects the D250SA to a negative point on the chassis. Because Damon has mounted both units next to each other and he's used the supplied connector plates, life's very simple because we don't need to run any cables between the units. When you're connecting the cables to the units here, it's important to do it properly. Note that the terminal screws here are actually longer than in previous models, which means that you can connect more things to them. That's always a good idea. Also, don't be tempted to just tighten them by hand. It's really not good enough. Ideally, you should be using a torque setting of seven Newton meters. Another critical part of installing one of these systems is ensuring that you find a clean connection to the chassis. In fact, a poor negative connection is probably the most common cause of 12 volt system failures. You can see the negative connection that Damon has selected here. It's underneath the battery. It's clean, it's dust free, and it's a spot that's going to stay that way, which is very important indeed, and will ensure that you always have a good and safe negative connection. Talking about cables, the D250SA has two mode selection leads, a red one and a black one. The black one is used if you have an AGM leisure battery. And what it does is trigger the system to provide, instead of 14.4 volts, 14.7 volts, which is what AGM batteries need. So if you have an AGM battery, make sure that you connect this little black lead to the negative terminal either on the battery or somewhere on the chassis. Many modern vehicles are equipped with smart alternators and all VW vans of this type are. Now in order to cope with this, to make sure that the D250SA works correctly, you need to connect this little red lead here to an ignition feed. If you don't connect the red lead to an ignition feed, then the D250SA simply won't be able to charge the batteries correctly because of the way the smart alternator works. If you don't need to use one or 
both of these mode leads, then leave the rubber isolating covers on, tape them up, and just stick the lead round the back somewhere out of the way. Next, we need to tape the temperature sensor onto the top of the battery. Find a spot that's clean and flat and is as close to the positive terminal as possible so that the D250SA gets an accurate reading of the battery's temperature, ensuring that it provides the correct voltage at all times. Another great feature of the D250SA is that it's got a built-in MPPT solar regulator, which can be used with solar panels with outputs from between 50 to 300 watts. And when you've installed the solar panel, you simply run a suitable lead to this dedicated terminal right here. There are LEDs on both units, which are indicators telling you how the system's operating. If all's well, they'll tell you. And if there's a problem, well, they'll tell you that as well. If there is a problem, consult your manual to find out exactly what the problem is. So, Fish, you're the proud owner of this amazing VW camper van. I've had a good look inside and it is stunning. You've done all the joinery work yourself. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, we've installed what we reckon is one of the best 12 volt electrical charging systems you can get. And I know you like going to festivals. I do indeed. So uh, you can go to festivals, you can go out into the middle of nowhere, you can stay off grid for many, many days and you will not run out of 12 volt power. Fantastic. So it's time to go. Let us know how you get on. Will do indeed. Yeah. Thank you, Andy, very much. Really nice Appreciate to meet that. you. Congratulations on a brilliant van. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.